Hello and welcome to the weekly wonders of the Chris Evans Brecky Best Bits. Joining in the fun is fab filmmaker Sam Taylor Johnson, a star of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul Bob Odenkirk. The tip top tunes are Glasgow Greats Deacon Blue, and there's me, Keely Hawes, talking about BBC One's The Casual Vacancy. Today's download is dedicated to all weekend transport managers. Professional or domestic, both need to be respected, treasured, cherished and thanked. And today's download is entitled, Weekends Get Simpler When You Get to Know Them Better. I'm so pleased you've joined us. I'd like to now introduce to you one of my favourites of all time. Yes, it's Friday! Hey, it's the weekend! Welcome to that Friday feeling. These happy days are yours and mine. These happy days are yours and mine. Happy days. So, let's say good morning to our first guest. Here she is, director of Fifty Shades of Grey, the movie, the whole world, the whole world, the whole planet. That's the planet where we live. He's talking about. Please welcome the sensational Sam Taylor Johnson. Good morning, Sam. Good morning. Grooving out there to happy days. Yes, I was. Welcome <laughs> to the program. How's your week been? Uh, manic, full on, and overwhelming. Really exciting and utterly exhausting. <laughs> how is, how is it, does it compare to other weeks in your life? Oh, it's off the Richter scale. I'm, I mean, it's just been uh, insane. Well, you will agree to direct movies like this. That's the thing, I suppose, isn't <laughs> no. it? In many ways, you know, uh, being coming off the back of a multi-hundred million selling book franchise, this is, in a way, I suppose, uh, the adult opportunity, equal opportunity of the, of the Harry Potter franchise, isn't it, in many ways, I suppose? <laughs> yeah, that's true. So how, do you, how did you get the gig? Because, I mean, there were other directors' names mentioned. How come they chose you? I, I'm not absolutely sure, but um, I think because I'd, I'd been at home and, and hadn't worked for four years and was, you know, being mum and, and um, just settling the family, and I just thought, I need to get back to work. And um, I had a couple of meetings, and, uh, and with this one, I just thought, I'm just going to go in and try and get it. And uh, I went in with so much passion for the project, and, yeah, they gave it to me 8 o'clock the next morning and said, you've got to decide by midday, and really? uh, we're announcing it to the world. And I was like, ah, give me a moment to think about this. No, you don't have a moment. <laughs> <laughs> so you pitch yourself. What was the pitch like? Give some people tips because there's there's people in the cars this morning, you yeah. know, or on the buses, the trains, the planes, the automobiles, yeah. wherever, going for interviews. Give them an oh. interview tip. What did you do? <laughs> How did you impress them? Unbridled passion. You just got to go in there, know the material, know what you want to do, and just you've just got to go in like you're the only person for the job. Give it to me. Really? Yeah, so, I'm the only person for the job. Give it to me. <laughs> no, but you, you're. Di- I don't know if you're director or debut or not, but I I I read a story about a film that you were involved in, and you you'd agreed to do it because obviously you're famous for your photography and you, you've done lots of things in your life and they've always been interesting, successful, talked about, uh, always good to be talked about when you're in our business, this business we call show. Uh, but uh, is it true that you sort of agreed to direct something and the next day thought, oh, please, please, I just want to run away. I'm not sure if I can do this. I, th- I think I've felt that pretty much with most of um, the, well, the, with the film jobs because there's such an enormous thing to take on. And, and with this one, it was like getting onto a high-speed train that I'd I couldn't get off. The doors had closed and I was on it and I think I'm still on it and I might get off next week and it's been over almost two years. So the producers chose you and then it was your job to choose who was going to be in the film. So how did you come up with your two leads? We're talking about Jamie Dornan and we're talking about Dakota... Johnson. Johnson, yeah. I always want to call her Daytona Johnson. I know it's Johnson, but I'm a big fan (laughs) of cars. There's a big car called the Daytona. (laughs) Then there's Dakota Raceway. So I always get it mixed up. So how did you come up with these two guys? Well, the, um, really, it was a, I mean, it was a big challenge both, both, both times, but uh, Dakota came in really early on, and she came, she came through the doors, and, uh, you know, I was interested in her. I'd seen a, a couple of things that she'd done, very, you know, little things, like she was in Social Network, and uh, there's a great scene with her and Justin Timberlake, and uh, I knew her from that. But when she came in, I got her to learn this four-page long monologue, and the way she read it was just so, so good, and uh, I just thought, yeah, she's definitely the Anastasia and she comes from great stock doesn't she as well yeah her grandmother's tippy hedron from the birds um hitchcock's film and uh her mother's melanie griffiths her dad's don johnson i mean it's in her dna she just uh she can't escape what she's doing and she's got that <laughs> lovely warmth about it that she i thought does. also melanie griffith had that warmth in movies you know yeah. she has she's so vulnerable yet this yeah. it, with a sort of uh, with steel woven in the middle somewhere but you're not quite sure where. yeah she's a, i mean she's a strong girl but she um she's funny that was the, the she's main thing. She's very funny. She's, she's very, very funny. funny. And the same with Jamie. I mean, Jamie actually was much, much harder to cast because on the page... I don't know anything about Jamie Dornan. Okay. Edu- educate me about Jamie okay, Dornan. Okay, so he's in, he's in this uh, TV series that is probably you know more known here called The Fall, and he's the lead in that. And uh, 
He is um, he's a, he's an amazing person. He's also funny, and the two of them try to out funny each other, and they're very competitive. They both think they're funnier than the other one, and um, <laughs> and and Jamie um, it's much harder because on the page, physically perfect, successful, wealthy, all of those things, and uh, charismatic. But the most important thing was, you know, I met a few people like that, but none of them could act until I met with Jamie, and I thought not only can he act, he's got a real soulful character, and I thought if we can get that up on screen. It should work. Happy Friday, everyone. What are you waiting for? Goulding, currently number one in the UK. The Ellie Goulding song fits perfectly with this movie, says Pete and Barkley. Peter, how do you know? Have you seen it? How do you see it? Were you in Berlin on Wednesday? Like Where exactly have you shown this film so far? Uh, Berlin on Wednesday. OK, is that it? <laughs> uh, New York. We had a big fan screening on... Right. Uh, whenever I, can't, I don't know what day it is. Last night here. Uh, last night here, um, New York. Uh, yeah, that's it. You look pretty fresh, by the way, considering you've been to all these premieres. Uh, I'll collapse next week. What time did you get in last night? Um, two... One, two o'clock? Two. <laughs> you look, you look fr- so fresh-faced. Oh, bless you. Well, you very well behaved, were I'm you? I'm very well behaved. That's the only reason I can keep going, I think. Or is it because yo- yoga runs in the family? Because your mum was a yoga teacher. Oh, yeah, that's too. right. She was, she was. I meditate. It helps. You do meditate? I, I read do. about that. Okay. Because yeah. how do you go about your meditation? Because some people use audio tapes, don't they? Some people have different methods, different approaches. I did the TM thing. You, you do an, an hour a day with, and uh, for four days, and then that's it. You're set up for life. You've learned it. <laughs> and uh, I just... I try and get up before all the kids get up which means getting up half an hour before they wake up which hurts um, and sit for 20 minutes and then that, that, that's why I can get through my day I could not get through the day without that Alright, we're talking to Sam Taylor-Johnson about Fifty Shades of Grey uh, the movie she's uh, just not just directed when did you finish making this film? Oh, I uh, finished uh, well we finished filming it February last year Right. and, um, and then finished it about literally a week before we, we So much talk it. about it, it's like the Da Vinci Code or Harry Potter like I, I said, know. you know, I mean you know, they talk about weight of pressure. It's a quality problem to have that kind of problem, it's isn't it? It's a quality problem. And, uh, you know, it's great to be part of something with such in- in ta- anticipation. So you say I'm together, I can't actually speak. But <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I might to look my world. OK. I yeah, but I get paid for it. <laughs> uh, it's 19 minutes past eight. Uh, music in the movie. We just played Ellie Goulding there. Uh, that features. You love your music. What else is I in do. the film? Um, well, we start out with a cracking Annie Lennox um, song, I Put a Spell on You. But um, the end of the movie, we have this amazing song called Earned It by The Weeknd. And oh, it's incredible. I love that song. And he wrote it especially for the movie. And um, and then I loved it so much, I said, I'll do the video for it. So we had a great time doing it. It was amazing after shooting and making a movie for over a year and a half and then making a video in a day. Can I ask you about um, research for the film as far as watching other films yeah. is concerned? Would I be right or just stupid uh, to presume and conclude <laughs> yes. that you probably watched, in preparation to make this movie, Nine and a Half Weeks, Pretty Woman, Indecent Proposal, and many, many more, as the old Greatest Hits adverts used to shout about? Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't watch them especially because I'd already watched them. They're all. You did know, you rewatch them? Uh, I, did, I, I didn't. You didn't. I, I was going to lie because it sounds more interesting, but I'm not <laughs> oh, going to. Feel free to lie. Lion's good yeah, on this. Yeah, I program. watched them all the week before. <laughs> okay, I thought I thought you, you'd watch nine and a half weeks like yesterday or something like no, that. No, oh, okay, all right. It's also you don't want to watch things too close to making your movie because you don't want to feel like it's fresh in your mind. Yeah. And you're going to copy it. No, you're right. Subconscious is uh, all you need sometimes, isn't it? Uh, I got to say, I know there are many scenes of the film we could or, or might not be able to talk about or shouldn't talk about, mm. but the one one scene I can definitely talk about, which I sub- I don't know what whether you think it's it's it's, it's um, important or not. The gliding sequence. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've, I've, it's I've, all all, important. <laughs> I've always wanted to, I've always fancied having a go at gliding before. There's that great famous scene where Steve McQueen glides in one of his films. Thomas Co- Crown Affair. Thomas Crown Affair, of course. That's one of the ones I've watched. For okay, I was going to say, for the, <laughs> but your glide, it's the best gliding sequence Yay. I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> and it's sort of what you need in the middle of the film. It is. Because you do need to be taken away from, from the depth and, you know. Well, it's sort of it. For me, that point is the pivotal point where we're about to descend into darkness and, and sadness ah. and. And so I felt like we just needed that uplifting time and they're just alone away from the world before it all goes 
terribly <laughs> downhill. <laughs> terribly, terribly. All right, uh, thank you, Sam, for being here. You going to stick with us? Yeah, of course. OK, Keely Hawes is going to join us next uh, because she's in a show that's going to premiere this Sunday on BBC One. It's the TV version of J.K. Rowling's The Casual Vacancy and she'll come into this studio live after this. This is your friend David Walliams and it's my job to tell you you're listening to The Chris Evans Breakfast Show on BBC Radio 2. Can I go now? Come in, Keely. Come and join us right now. Never met her before. Hello, Keely. Sit over there. Meet Sam Taylor Johnson. All right, come and sit down, Keely. So this show that you've got on, my friend, I had to come back yesterday because I forgot the DVD of it uh, because I was going to watch it ahead of your appearance uh, this morning. But what a programme. Well, congratulations to everybody involved in The Casual Vacancy. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Yes, and what a lovely bunch they are. A lovely bunch of great work. I mean, amazing work. Fantastic. Top twist in episode one. Top, Top twist. Like mega twist. Top twist. What Unbelievable. <laughs> well, I, I ain't going to say because I don't because I didn't see that come in. No. And I had the old twist binoculars out. I was looking, I was like, what's going to happen? What's going And then, oh, no, 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 no. That couldn't have happened. <laughs> now, before we talk about what's going on in the show, we'll play some more music in a sec. Um, this village that you descend upon, yes, it's another, Hanford. yeah, it's another rural idyll. It is. Okay, are they are they ready now for the onslaught of what's going to happen come Monday morning when everybody wants to go because it's so beautiful? They are, I think they are, they are ready after us descending on them for quite some time last summer. Um, it's probably given them a, a little taster, but I think the Americans will um, be arriving by the by the coach load. Well, those are from Berkshire will be pretty close behind them, I yes. have to say. It's absolutely <laughs> so beautiful. gorgeous. It's, it's so beautiful. And uh, that would explain the sunshine, of course, because it was last summer. It it was, summer. was it a great shoot to be it's part absolutely of? Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. And I know everybody always says that, everything was fabulous, and blah, 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 but it really, really was. There was a, a And great... some lovely pubs around there. Oh, oh, lovely pubs. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent cast lunches, Excellent. I would imagine. <laughs> All right, okay, we'll talk to you more in a second. You're listening to the Chris Evans Breakfast Show on BBC Radio 2. Susie and the Manchies, Hong Kong Garda. Uh, 8.26, BBC Radio 2, with us this morning, already Sam Taylor-Johnson, director of Fifty Shades of Grey. Joining us now, also Keely Hawes, starring in The Casual Vacancy, three one-hour episodes starting this Sunday night, BBC One, 9pm. It is such a good programme. Based on the J.K. Rowling novel, now, of course... Um, you know, she is who she is. I hadn't read the book. I bought the book, Keely, yes. but I didn't read it. I don't know why. And then on uh, Thursday, uh, no reflection on J.K. Rowling, I was doing a charity box and I thought, brand new, untouched, I'll put it in there. Just thought I'm not going to get around to reading this. And I had no idea what it's about. When I go and see movies for the show, the team often say, you know, it's about... No, no, don't tell me. I don't care. I don't, I don't want to... Mm. It's about a circus or a spaceship. I don't want to know. Mm. And so I did, had no idea what the casual vacancy was about until I saw your first episode last night. Do we praise it for the listeners? Um, no, but we, the, the, the great thing about it is, is that you don't have to have read the book. Um, you absolutely don't. So um, you can come to it fresh. And Sarah Phelps, uh, who adapted it, has certainly made it her own. I think so. Um, I've got to tell you, I was worried about it ever starting because the title sequence is so long. It's quite long. There are <laughs> quite a few of us in it, though. It, does, it sort of goes alphabetically through it's, it's the entire beautiful. cast. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's a good title sequence. Yes. Uh, yes. Reminding me a bit of All Creatures Great and Small. Yes, yeah, slightly. But, but then zero animals. <laughs> uh, Flynn, do you have any idea what the casual vacancy is about? Uh, absolutely okay. none. From I... the title, what yes. would you think? It's something to do. With with letting agencies. Uh oh. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Right. So, okay. Let me just put so, it straight. Right. Okay. So <laughs> you're, you're getting you're cold. You're pretty cold. I'm so let's see if you can get any warmer. Uh, just just from the title, the casual vacancy. I see a lonely motel on a highway. Oh, oh cold. Oh, Christ. Cold. Right. <laughs> okay. You probably need to tell us now. A don't casual you? vacancy um, is basically something that arises when. Uh, uh, a seat becomes available on the council. So it's a term, isn't it? It's a recognised so term. term. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I didn't know what that was. I did have to, to look that up. And then I read the book and then it all becomes clear. But it's not something that we would just generally know about. No, um, and you, what I love about the programme, I mean, to be honest, there's nothing I didn't like about it. I, honestly, this is like five stars. I loved it. It was brilliant. Thank you. Um, what I loved about it specifically was, and you might like this, Sam, as well, when the title comes up in the dialogue. Yes, it was of brilliant. Course. Yes. And everyone sort of slightly gives each other a, a little casual shifting look. vacancy has arisen. <laughs> like, yes, the title's in the show. I love it because Fifty Shades of Grey doesn't pop up, does oh, it? Oh, it does. Is it the, yeah. what, the, the, the right, right, right? Oh, he's. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't want to spoil anything, but yes. Oh, no, does, is it when he? Is it when he leans but like this on the desk? I'm Fifty Shades of Grey. Does he say it or does she say it? He says it. Does he sound Fifty Shades of Grey? 
He, he says 56. something I can't repeat. What does oh, he do? Yeah, oh, I know what he says. <laughs> yes. The, 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 so it's not the title that's in the film. Well, there's a, the, the big chunk of it. Okay, I'll turn the microphones <laughs> off. Turn all the microphones <laughs> off. Okay. Is it where he says? What? That's what. That's what he says, isn't <laughs> it? He does. It is exactly. I'll, what I'll he tell says. you later. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so all microphones were off then, weren't they? Okay. Excellent. Right, and they're not now. Uh, we'll just confirm that. Lynn, you okay with the travel? I'm over here. Yo. Ladies and gentlemen, Deacon Blue. <laughs> oh, we've shipped to the audience. Yay! <laughs> How about this? How about this? We've never done this before. How about the guests give the audience a round of applause? How about that? Yay! It's not as good as when the audience give the guests a round of applause. <laughs> But we'll work on it. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, Chris. How's Deacon Blue this morning? We're, we're fine. This is the first time we've been together, actually, for, 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 a, for a month or so. So we're just kind of catching up ourselves. Well, you'd never know. <laughs> you might, yeah, you might, yeah. We might be just about to find out now. Right, what are you going to play for us first? Well, we thought we'd play Dignity. Dignity, Deacon Blue, on the radio right now, Friday morning. Singing about work Ooh. And I'm thinking How good it would be To be here someday On a ship called Dignity A ship called Dignity That Just met. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> but how good a Dika Blue. Come on, oh, Sam. Unbelievably oh, excellent. And fantastic. to be this close. I know, I know. <laughs> it's a isn't it? <laughs> if only well, the band was so closer. close. <laughs> <laughs> right, so with us this morning, Deacon Blue. Uh, going to be playing songs from the new album later. Three more songs <laughs> to go from Deacon Blue. Also, Sam Taylor Johnson talking about Fifty Shades of Grace. She directed the whole thing. And Will again. Uh, Keely Hawes talking about J.K. Rowling's The Casual Vacancy, which begins this Sunday on BBC One. Coming up soon, Bob Odenkirk. Right, do you all know who Bob Odenkirk is? Yes. Okay. I don't know who Bob Odenkirk is. Okay, Bob Odenkirk is this brilliant, brilliant American actor, and he won't mind the fact you don't know who he is. Um, and he plays Saul Goodman from Breaking Bad. Oh, okay. no! Oh, yes, no, it's true, he does. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you mean, oh, no? I mean, oh, no, because... What? No, my, my son, Miles, is, is the biggest Breaking Bad no, fan. No, he's not, no, he's not, I am. No, apart from you. Oh, no, he's he, not. Oh, no, he uh, is. Producer Paul oh, no, is. Yes, okay. he is. Oh, so I should know that. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's all right. Oh, okay. Anyway, the point is, Breaking Bad's huge. A TV Massive. show couldn't really be any bigger. No. It's been off now and for I've like... I've heard of Breaking Bad. Yeah, three or four years. <laughs> and, um, you know, people, there are sad box set couples like me and my wife. We've been ca- we caught up with it last year. People are catching up with it all the time. But... He's the star of this spin-off show yes. called Better Call Saul yes. because he plays this... Do- I mean, you've never, ever come across a dodgier lawyer. A, a lawyer. His name's not even Saul Goodman. We well, find that out. There's one or two in Glasgow. They, they, yeah. <laughs> well, I think you'd give them a run for the money, to be honest, Ricky. I could, I could name them if I was pushed. Well, I'm, how do you know these dodgy lawyers in Glasgow? <laughs> <laughs> They're neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> OK. But uh, he, he's part of the spin-off show. He is the centre. And he's to be fabulous, but as good as, if not better. Well, they've already ordered another 14 same. one hours, which they don't do lightly in America. Good, no, are they, Sam? no, they don't. Okay, must be good. By the way, we've lost Sam Taylor Johnson for the moment to Los Angeles. Haven't oh, we? Well. For the, mo- for the moment. Can't imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just for the moment. Exactly. All right, so he's going to come very come and join us very soon indeed. Uh, getting lots of love for Deacon Blue already. Chris made my day here in Deacon Blue, uh, says Johnny. Uh, Chris, uh, th- Phil says thank you on the North Norfolk coast. You're very welcome. Chris, you're in for a real treat. Saw Deacon Blue at the Montrose Festival a few years ago. They are off the charts. Well, we've had him at Carfest, of course we have. And I saw you back in the 80s at the Palace Theatre in Manchester supporting oh, Benny King. Oh, wow. Good. When, That's you, good. when you were the support act, and Rain yeah. Town, Rain Town, your album had been out forever, and it, 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 they, they, your CBS, they left it out yeah. there, and they kept right. it out there, and they said, this is going to happen. God bless them. God bless and them. And eventually, it did click. You reached the reached the tipping point. Massive album, huge album. Um, was in the charts for two years, but you were supporting Betty King. He wasn't supporting That's you. Right. So That's who right. who else did you support around that time that do you we know, may we have didn't heard of? do that. We did Betty King a couple of times in the early days. Uh, we didn't do that many... We never did a whole support tour. Um, 
So that we ended up doing, we ended up, uh, you know, just playing lots of clubs and lots of places and so on. We did uh, Bruce, Hornsby. Bruce Hornsby, thanks, Jim. Bruce Hornsby, yeah. And uh, what about people who've supported you, you know, when, when they were just beginning and, and now yeah. we may have heard this of is a sore, This is a sore subject. Yeah. Come on, oh, yeah. oh, come on, I like this, come on. Well, who, we, who? We, we saw a few grand attraction playing some college gig and we fell in love with them with yes. Eddie's voice and we said, oh, they should come out and tour with us. So they came out and tour with us. And? And whilst they were on tour with us, yeah. their single went to number one. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and now here's the support actor who are currently a more yeah, famous than we are. Don't you hate it when that happens? All right. Here we go with First Aid Kit, Master Pretender, and after this we will meet Bob Odenkirk. Never thought that I was... Happy Friday, everyone. First aid kit, Master Pretender, yes. 17 to 9. So we have lost, temporarily, Sam Taylor-Johnson to Los Angeles. She's here with us this morning. Let's make the most of her. Uh, we're talking, <laughs> talking about um, Keely. without giving out your address, Keely, yes. uh, we, we could actually say you'll be quite busy with the rugby weekend around your um, yes. neck yes, of the woods. Yes. What do you but do? My husband is a, is a massive fan, so it's, um, you know, he, loves, he loves the rugby. Right, OK. Does he go? He does go. He so does he can go. walk? He's not going this he, can walk. he can walk? No, no, but... Yeah, we're, we're quite pretty close. close. Pretty close, oh, okay. <laughs> not that. All right. Can you hear the roars from your garden? Um, we used to be able to hear the roars. Oh, we used to be exciting. able to hear the, the singing and the you know swing low. And okay. Anybody else here with us today, from a guest point of view, who can hear public things from their own garden? Yeah. Yes. We, Go on, Ricky. Well, Hamden is not too far from where Hamden, the Scottish football stadium, is not too far. Can from you where. hear the goals? Well, the thing is, the 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 the, the, uh, <laughs> the capacity has come down over the years. Why are you giggling? <laughs> he said he can hear the booze. Yeah. He said, uh, what goals? He's yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> it's Scotland game. But the, the night that Mike Tyson fought there, it was you could hear all the stuff going on. Mike right. Tyson. It was a big build-up, and I was walking around the park with the dog, and I was saying, "This is really exciting." And there was this massive shout went up. The fight was over in 30 seconds. Yeah. And and I thought, oh, nothing happened. And I went home and discovered <laughs> an awful lot of angry. Glaswegians. It's like when you're at Glastonbury, you can go around to Glastonbury and you can get in a certain part of the the, the whole event and you can sit there <laughs> and you can wait for the wind to blow and you hear one band yeah. as the wind blows one way. And you, <laughs> <laughs> it's great fun, isn't it? You know. I can hear a lot of screaming from our house because there's a house just at the end of our street which is which is a bit old and ramshackled and they constantly shoot horror films there. So I keep in the like three o'clock in the morning because they do night shoots. You suddenly hear this like blood curdling scream, and, yeah. what and, uh, and then and then you just <laughs> look outside. Well, as long as that's all they shoot there, that's... and you look outside and you see um, you see all the crew. And you're like, oh, okay. It is great, Los Angeles, though, because you go around and like they're making movies everywhere. It's so exciting. Literally every corner. Because <laughs> because um, um, Evan Davis, who's the new host of Newsnight, is pictured in the paper today with a broken leg walking across the plaza here and everybody said you know what's he done he hasn't done anything he was bit, he was actually in an episode of w1a uh, they they sort of hauled him in to do that i didn't realize they 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 did because they've not asked us to be in it it's not gonna happen <laughs> okay does he get paid for that <laughs> oh alex jones in it oh it's just tv thing it's tv favoring tv all right move on okay <laughs> let's go to let's go to our next guest he's from america he's brilliant we all love him his name is bob odenker come in bob round the applause for Sit over there if you don't mind. <laughs> Saul Goodman in the house with us All this right. morning. Okay. Good morning, it's Bob. Madness. How are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm overwhelmed by it's such tight. Do these people not have offices or? <laughs> <laughs> these people are our audience, and they're here to give you another round of applause. Hey. How much do you get paid? For that? Do you know what? Yeah. The bizarre thing is, Bob. These guys have, have paid a lot of money to charity to be here today. Oh, really? So it's actually the reverse. I mean, fantastic. Yeah, Good news. The best way. In the tens of thousands. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not joking. Wow. Yeah, and with the present so tax nice. change rate of 154 as of this morning, that's a lot of dollars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if people who, do, who do, don't know who Saul Goodman is, can you sort of give us a one minute pitch of, of who your character is? Where I was he born? Where did he come from? He's uh, a sleazy lawyer. Uh, which we have a lot of in America. It's like a career path. It's a, and, and they're on they're on ads on billboards and they're on buses and they say things like, "In an accident, we make it rain," and they they encourage you to get into car accidents. There's a lot of kids. I think they see these ads and they think, "They I'm not going to have a career. I'm just going to get into a really good car accident." And uh, a lawyer is going to sue for me, and I'm going to be rich the rest of my life. But um, yeah, he's one of those uh, those lawyers. I don't know if you have him here. 
Well, we, you do. We, she we, says we, you do. We're getting Many more people and more, have said we? we don't. That's the thing. But you must, right? You must. Please, I'll, I'll, I'll please tell me America didn't invent that. Well, no, you did, <laughs> but it's catching on here as most things do. And we have this so he's one of those guys, and, and he, he was a character in Breaking Bad who tried to work things out for Walter White and, uh, and skim off the top. Uh, and and, and it's, he, it didn't work out for him. Okay, now this is a new show. It's available on Netflix. Yes. It's uh, premiered on Monday. We can get uh-huh. our first episode on Monday. And then in this modern day of um, instant gratification, we were forced to wait a whole 24 hours for the next episode. <laughs> I don't know what Which is incredible is. nowadays. Yeah, right. uh, so we've seen the first two episodes. And 14 more hours have already been booked. Now, th- that's, that's obviously not a terrible sign, is it? No, it's a, it, it means they like you. That they give you more. Uh, yeah, we're going to go shoot a second season, and it's, it's playing well. It's a very – same writers as uh, Breaking Bad, Vince Gilligan, Peter Gould. These are great writers. You don't know them. Geez. Yeah, we do know We do know them. We absolutely know them. Great, really? We are, we are Breaking Bad crazy. Well, these the same yeah. people created it, and uh, – yeah, what can I say? It's uh, I think it's good. I've only seen two myself. Oh, I heard this. How come? Well, I don't know. Do you watch everything you do? Do you go home and listen to this I, show? I, I find it's best not... No, I do listen to the show. I also make my kids listen do to you it really? every tea time. <laughs> <laughs> How funny was Daddy today? <laughs> Seriously. I, uh, Otherwise, no ice cream. <laughs> My kids could never watch anything I did. They didn't know what I did because everything I've done has been so uh, uh, adult-oriented. But isn't it true that one of your children were instrumental in you you taking this on anyhow? They were, didn't you? Didn't you turn it down? Well, I said no because they wanted me to go live in Albuquerque to shoot it. And it's a beautiful town. But it's not where our house is, <laughs> and uh, and I and I thought that you know my my poor wife trying to run her business and manage two teenagers who need to be driven somewhere right now as we speak um, would be impossible. So I said I couldn't do it, and uh, and then my son came to me and he goes, "You're not going to do that show?" And I go, "Yeah, no, I, don't, I don't think we're ready for it, the family." And he goes, uh, "Well, you're going to disappoint a lot of people." And I said, well, I'll disappoint a lot of strangers. And he goes, well, some of them are my friends. <laughs> so uh, he said, you should do it. And then my daughter as well came to me and said, uh, this is a big opportunity for you, Dad. You should do this. Isn't and, that lovely? Yeah, and then they promised everything would be great at home and that they'd help. <laughs> and then... Uh, and they lied. They were lying. <laughs> they lied! <laughs> they they lied just to lied! Die. <laughs> but it all worked out, and everybody survived, and uh, we made a first season. Okay, well done. And uh, you're going to start filming the second season this year. It's going to be broadcast, I think, next year. Yeah, it? yeah. Same and time it'll come on in February. Are you, are you signed up like till you're 103 now? No, huh? no. It's just, uh, no, come on. We're not that confident. It's still showbiz, right? No, but I, I thought, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Is it, don't the contracts work that way? Don't you have to? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But that's you all have to do BS. if they say. Yeah, but you don't have to do that. You, don't have to you do know that, that right? No, I have no idea. You I, don't you worry don't about these contracts once it, once you're past. Contract? The, <laughs> tear it up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there's paper here, but there's nothing important on it. Yeah, no, you can just, uh, after the second year, you just say, yeah, I don't honor that any longer. That's my old signature. Yeah. And as speaking as a <laughs> lawyer. You're qualified to do that. Yeah, right, okay. right. Now, Deacon Blue, have you heard of Deacon Blue? Yes, I have. Okay, well, Deacon Blue are going to play another song. They're going to blow I've, you away I've now. I've heard of everybody in this room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have you heard of, have you heard I, of I, I, I haven't read The Casual Vacancy, but I'm hoping a little Hogwarts will All right. pop in. Have you, heard of Nick, have you heard of Nick Whale Auctions? <laughs> I have not. Okay. Well, well, I'm, well you I'm have now. Sorry. All right, Ted, what are you going to play for us next? Uh, we're going to play Real Gone Kid. Okay, Real Gone Kid. Deacon Blue, here we go. <laughs> Happy Friday. Happy days. All right, thank you so much, Lynn. Remind us what you're doing for Valentine's again, please. Uh, yeah, I'm going to Edinburgh for the build-up to the um, rugby match between uh, Scotland and Wales. So I'll be f- there for Radio right. Wales. So yes. for Valentine's, you're in charge of 80,000 men. Oh, I haven't thought of it like that. Yeah. Oh, really? What a date that is. <laughs> it's one Congratulations. Of a I'll right. be busy. Let's talk Valentine's now with our guests. Uh, but you can't wait for this. Right, so, <laughs> who wants to go first? Uh, Ricky, what do you do for Valentine's? <laughs> Well, actually, really nice. I've got two children who are uh, 
very far away at the moment. Uh, all our children are far away. Four, four of them are scattered around the world. Two of them are coming. One's coming home tonight. My little boy's coming home tonight. He's been away skiing. And my daughter, who lives in San Francisco, is coming home for the weekend. Great. So we're, we're going to have a family reunion. So nothing for Valentine's Day is the answer to that. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> we got a text earlier on of a couple whose um, children, for their Valentines, uh, their 15-year-old is going to cook and their 11-year-old is going to be the waiter. Oh, that's cute. Could you get some of that going on? Yeah, us? we could. Definitely. That, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? The, the okay. 14-year-old go to the chip shop. <laughs> right. <laughs> Friday night is chip shop night. Of course it is. Uh, Friday is fish <clears throat> night. Sam Taylor-Johnson, what are you doing for Valentine's? I will be flying back home, so it's going to be a long journey, so I feel like I'm making Valentine's Day extra long. Yeah? <laughs> with, with your beloved, or is he in Los with Angeles? With my beloved, yes. Oh, God, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. So you can we'll have a be... glass of champagne over the Atlantic. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? That'd be amazing. <laughs> All right, Keely Horse, what are you doing? Well, my husband is watching the rugby. And then oh, I'm that's going, nice. That's nice. <laughs> He's already booked that in, can I just say. Um, and then I'm going to a 70th birthday party. Yay! <laughs> Isn't that marvellous? Oh, it's so sexy. <laughs> so, yes. yes Gold, so that's Golden me. Graham, who works in the show. Graham, give us a wave. Youngest member of the team. Very handsome at the back there. He, yeah, lovely puppy fat, it has to be said. You don't worry about that, do you? When you're 20... No! When you're 27, you don't... Because you've still got time to grow into your face. Or however it works. <laughs> When you're approaching 50, you get the face you deserve. That's what they say. Anyway, Graham and his gorgeous <laughs> wife, uh, they, what they do every Valentine's is they have a dinner party just for, for those two. They're the only couple there, but then they invite all their single mates to see what might happen. Isn't that a lovely oh, idea? Yeah, <laughs> to nice. see what might happen to who? To their single friends. <laughs> <laughs> or or maybe not. Maybe you're way ahead of the game here. <laughs> they, used to, they, they used to do that in L.A. in the 70s. <laughs> they had a hot tub involved. Yeah, maybe it's more easy. selfish than it yeah. seems. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Right, OK, Bob, uh, can you do anything for Valentine's when you're here and everybody else is elsewhere? I have a great excuse for not doing anything, uh, <laughs> but it's not going to be good enough, so I will, I will be calling the flower shop and getting something delivered. Oh. And then we'll do something, because I, I am busy, I cannot be there, I'm not in the same city. We'll be Skyping, and it will be a Skype date. Okay, and you have proof, because you, you are you're on the radio. Is that why you've come on this show, to yes, prove exactly. that you're here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so with us this morning, we have Bob Odenkirk, star of Box at Bonanza Breaking Bad, uh, telling us about Better Call Saul, his brand-new show on Netflix. We have Sam Taylor-Johnson talking about Fifty Shades of Grey. She's the director of the film The Whole World is talking about. And Keely Hawes has joined us also, talking about BBC's adaptation of J.K. Rowling's The Casual Vacancy, which begins this Sunday on BBC One. And Deacon Blue are here playing songs from the new album, and they're all coming back with questions from the guests. To the guests after nine o'clock. After the news with Moira Stewart on the BBC. Welcome to another day here on Planet Earth. Uh -huh. Call me Blondie. We'll dedicate that especially to our guests this morning. The guests you're not hearing talking on the radio, at least not yet. That's Nick, he of the Whale family, Nick and Sally Whale, and Seb and Lucy Whale. Who between them have raised over £250,000 for children needs. So well done. Thank you so much. And that's via Nick's company, Silverstone Auctions. They raised £100,000 for us in 2012 and they raised £150,000 for us last year. Uh, so thank you so much. And this year, they've just given us a donation to come to the Danisco. So thank you so much. Nice. Also, what about the Tweed clan? Davina Tweed! Yay. Also giving us a big fat check just to hang out generally, which is uh, lovely news. Hanging out this morning uh, with Deacon Blue, talking about their new single out on the 16th of March. It's called Win. Their album, A New House, is out now. It's in my car. Uh, me and my son were enjoying it on the way home uh, yesterday from school. Uh, Keely Hawes is with us, talking about the BBC's adaptation of J.K. Rowling's The Casual Vacancy. It begins on Sunday at 9 o'clock. It is brilliant. Sam Taylor-Johnson here, director of Fifty Shades of Grey, the movie the whole world is talking about. At the moment, anybody anywhere else apart from the world it's being talked about? This? Have you checked? <laughs> Haven't checked. Now, and how many movies are you signed up for? Because is this a trilogy? Is it? Oh uh, yeah, when you when you begin something like this, they make sure they sign you up for the for all three, and then it, if if it does okay, then they come back to you and say. All right, we want you to do it. And then, uh, yeah, then you see where it goes. So currently they own you? Nah, I wouldn't like to think of it that way. Well, who is it? <laughs> who is it that may own you? Who's your keeper at the moment? It, it, it's uh, Universal Studios. Universal Studios. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob Odenkirk here, uh, star of uh, Breaking Bad, now star of the spin-off, uh, the star of it, uh, Better Call Saul. <laughs> How is it for you, Bob, stepping into being the central character? Because, you know, 
everybody loves a sidekick. Everybody loves, mm-hmm. It's very hard yeah. to be disliked as a bit part player. Yes, it's um, easy to be hated as, as the main be. man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So how how's, how's, have you found that transition? Uh, people have been very nice. I cannot believe how uh, open-minded everyone's been about this spinoff. Because people loved Breaking Bad so much, you know. And usually when people love something so much that you can't touch it with... You can't use any part of it ever again or mm. do any more. But uh, generally, people have been eager to see this show and open about it. And uh, as far as me being the lead, I don't. I still don't consider myself the lead. I, I'm just. I just have more lines than I usually do. Okay, um, Keely and Sam, what do you think about Bob? You've never met him before. Do you think he's? He comes. He strikes me as a very quietly charismatic individual. What do you two think? That's what I'm shooting for. <laughs> <laughs> He just blew it. Oh, no. What do you think? It was working. He has an air about him, doesn't he? He certainly does, yeah. He's, he's Well, really I cool. didn't shower, so. <laughs> so nice guys can that's make it. Those pheromones. They can? Is that it? Uh, I think so. You hang in there. Who's your hero? Who's my hero? In the, in the acting world. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I love Bill Murray. Yeah? Yeah, because he's so natural. Do you know him? Screen. I know. I know his brother's. Well, that's, you, and I'm a you, Chicago you're guy, close, aren't but you? I've never met Bill himself. Right. But so I, I know your, his brothers. Your brother, well. your brother is also called Bill, isn't he? Yeah, and he's a writer at The Simpsons. He's Very pretty cool. funny guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has he directed Simpsons episodes? He does direct. Oh my yes. God, what's yeah. that like? Wait, well, all day long he has a little uh, iPad, and all day long they're sending him images, like all day, uh, and he takes it out and writes on the image. You know, make this a closer shot. Uh, he. It's just a constant thing you're always doing and what he's doing. It's kind of interesting. All right, so questions from the guests to the guests. Sam, who would you like to ask a question uh, of? Deacon Blue. Okay. Uh, and my question is, have you ever played to an audience this close where we're literally standing <laughs> on your lap? <laughs> we're literally on your lap. Well, you know, when, yeah, in the early days you do. Uh, people are quite, yeah, quite close. Yeah. Um, but n- Not yeah, for a while. But it's, it's strange. You, you, playing to this audience, you just think, I don't know if I want to engage. Yeah. I'm engaging with that clock. Yeah, no, because yeah. I'm trying so hard not to catch your eye because I literally <laughs> yeah. am two and a half feet away from your yeah. nose. <laughs> I, I was here a few months ago in your seat and, and Anastasia was here and I was feeling the same thing. I was feeling a bit more... I mean, she seemed to be quite comfortable. I, I was feeling a little bit intimidated. <laughs> it's quite interesting when Paul McCartney is a guest on the show yes, I'm sure. for the musicians behind him. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Really, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they that, shake. That's they a just, bit of a challenge. They shake. Oh, thanks. Thanks. So, thanks. Bob, who would you like to ask a question to? I'm going to ask Sam Taylor Johnson, is it inappropriate for a single man to go see the movie? <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, no, no, not single, like not married. He could be married. <laughs> But to a, just a one guy, is that creepy? Is that wrong? Oh, Will they sell that person saying. a ticket? Yeah. Should they sell that person a ticket? Will the police ask him to leave? Bob, we get it. We get oh. it. We get it. Oh. Now you put it like that with all of those things. Um, no, I think a single man alone could feel okay coming to okay. see this movie. <laughs> Great question. Pretty good answer, I have to say. Ooh. Maybe they could go with a million other men. You'd like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, okay, so, Keely, who would you like to ask a question? I'd like to, to ask you a question. Oh, you can't do this. You're yeah. not allowed. I can do it's that. not I allowed. Can. Oh, what what are you doing? And this isn't in some sort of invitation, yes. but what are you doing on Valentine's Day? <laughs> well, I've booked a table, um, yes. the usual pool hall, <laughs> my wife loves to frame a pool. Of course she does. And that's my that's my standard. That's so I've actually talked about it on the radio. We go we're going out with another couple because we think it's a bit icky. Because we go out together for dinner all the time, so we don't want to go out you know, specifically on our own on Valentine's Day. So we're going out with another couple. Very nice. And a si- and and a singleton who happens to be our weather lady, Carol. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, so who knows what's going to happen? Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like it'll be quite an evening. Ricky, uh, well, a <laughs> uh, question, please, from Ricky Ross to anyone you like. Well, to all the actors, really, but to Sam, particularly because she's she's doing this round of premieres. I mean, what happens mm. when you do a premiere? Do you? I, I've heard from other directors that you yeah. you sort of go in for a bit, then you kind of sneak out. You sneak out. Yeah. What, what do you? How do you do it? Because you must see the film a million times. Yeah, I think I have seen this a million times. We were editing it for. N- almost a year actually and uh, you just keep changing it and changing it and finessing and changing it but I have to say um, I saw it first with an audience in New York just three, four days ago and it was it was mind blowing because I've been in this tiny dark room just with one other person working on it and suddenly I was in front of a thousand fans 
And, I mean, it was mind-blowing. And then last night I thought, I cannot see this movie again. Um, I, so I introduced <laughs> it and then I thought... You get um, laughs where you didn't expect it. You know, things like that happened, didn't Yeah, you? no, absolutely. And, and also it's really amazing how... Because I've now seen it with a fan audience in New York. I saw it at the Berlin Film Festival and I saw it in London. And how people laugh at different things. Yeah. And, uh, and how people don't laugh at some things, which is unnerving. Um, <laughs> but then you see it in another country and they do laugh at that. Yeah. And you yeah. think, OK, covered the spectrum. You're right. This is just great, isn't it? All right, pretty silence for Ports for Thought now. Abdul, good morning. Good morning, Chris. How are you? <laughs> Very well. Do you have a love theme for us? I do have a love. Love is in the air. But I have to admit, Chris, that although I'm all for celebrating love, I have a somewhat ambivalent relationship with Valentine's Day. Growing up, I was never the most popular kid at school and, and certainly no Don Juan when it came to schoolyard entanglements. <laughs> Truthfully, I was hesitant and awkward when it came to romance. Throughout my school years, every February would bring the obligatory giving of Valentine's cards. In kindergarten, when love was an emotion freely given, you made cards for everyone. It was innocent and sweet. Things change as you grow up. The stakes get higher. Sending a Valentine's Day card starts to mean something different. In high school, if you were lucky, some secret or not-so-secret admirer would slip a note in your locker. In my school, for a dollar, you could send some heart-shaped confectionery to that special someone. While some desks would be crowded by peppermint hearts, others remained empty, my own among them. Aww. Whether you are desperately looking for love, as I probably was in those days, or have found it, as I finally did... Hurrah! <laughs> as, as I finally did over 13 years ago, it's easy to get cynical about candlelight dinners, overpriced bouquets, and internet dating. But we all yearn for affection, acceptance, passion. Sometimes all we want is a love that overwhelms us, that takes us to places where we otherwise wouldn't have gone. The great sages of the Muslim tradition knew of this love. For them, God was the true beloved because God was the source of all love. They spoke of God as an elusive lover. They became mad with desire. The minute I heard my first love story, I started looking for you, not knowing how blind that was, confessed the mystic Rumi. Lovers don't finally meet somewhere. They're in each other all along. When we see the beauty of a lover, Rumi seems to say, we really see the splendor of God. Sometimes passion is a rocky road that leads us into shades of grey, dark, dangerous places which excite and frighten us. Even the mystics understood that. But I'd wish I'd learned as a kid that true love, the kind that is tested and endures, is something more. It's like a thousand rays of light illuminating our lives, connecting us to the source of all love. After all, isn't it the place from where we all came anyway? Hi, this is Leonardo DiCaprio. Happy Friday. Thank you very much. Well done, Lynn. The people will never know why, but we do here in the studio. All uh, right, thanks so much to our big bidders for children need. Come and say hello quickly. Come on, Nick. Come and say hello to your gang. Thank you very much. Quick as you can. Just going to say hello to Chloe and William, please, Chris. Yeah, our two you little can. ones at home. Okay, Thank once again, much. thanks so much for your donation. Thank okay. you for having me. And Davina, welcome to the show. Who do you want to say hello to? Hello to Heatherland's First School in Pool in Dorset. All right, thanks and for being here. Yes. And we'll see you for the Dino Disco. Dino Disco. Can be Thank you. Thank you. Well, Bob tells us uh, what to do over the weekend generally. You must go see a Fifty Shades of Grey, <laughs> even if you're just a lone guy. <laughs> and you must see the casual vacancy, please, on BBC One at 9 p.m. this Sunday. And Deacon Blue's new single, Win, is out, so rush out and get that. It's, uh, and the album, A New House, is out now as well. <laughs> Lastly, get Netflix. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks to Sam Taylor Johnson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keeney Hawes and Deacon Blue going to play us out. What do you have for us guys now? This is a song that's played at our wedding uh, nearly 25 years ago, so very romantic. What's it going to be? This is uh, uh, Forever Young. And we want you to join in, okay? <laughs> to 91FM, BBC Radio 2.